Hey, welcome back friends. If you want to join the friends, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. So today we're bringing it in with a guide for the memorial to Guthix. Honestly, I'm doing this just because I have the maximum amount of memory strains and it's starting to annoy me having the pop-ups every single time that it tries to give me some more memory strains saying, hey, you better go do this. So what I did is I bought all of these energies here. This is the amount that you need of every single energy to complete this three times. I believe three times is the maximum amount you need to get the rewards. I believe for the completionist cape you only need to do this once, but if you want to have the maximum amount of different uh, perks active at a time, uh, you do need to do it three times. So that's the amount that I'm going to be doing. For that you are going to need 9,576 of these memory strands. That's a little bit deceptive. You actually only need 8,576 because you actually get a thousand for completing it the first time and if you're doing this while you are going uh, the first one only costs you 2280 and then it gives you a 10 percent increase to the amount of memory strands that you're actually going to be gaining so keep that in mind if you are doing this as you go it will be a little bit faster than the way i did it i personally was just afking some uh divine omatic and making a little bit of money and happened to have 10,000 strands so I'm going to be using 8,576 strands, uh, but you may vary depending on what divination level you are because you do get some extra for certain divination levels. But the energies that you need are going to be 2,100 pale energies, 1,680 flickering energies, 1,890 bright energies, 2,100 glowing energies, 1,680 sparkling energies. 1,470 gleaming energies, 2,100 vibrant energies, 1,260 lustrous energy, 1,050 brilliant energy, 1,260 radiant energy, 1,050 luminous energy, and only 630 incandescent energies. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing is not keeping these in your inventory the entire time while you're doing this because there is one of the engrams that you have to collect that is going to be in the wilderness. So I'm going to go ahead and deposit all these into my bank. That way I don't have to risk them when I run into the wilderness. And I'm going to go ahead and show you where to get all the engrams. The first one is automatically obtained when you first start this up and you will get Naragi here. The second engram is actually going to be on the Void Knight Outpost. Uh, you're going to want to go underneath this little canvas here. You can see the Elder Sword engram on this little barrel. Uh, it is on the southeastern end of the Void Knight Island. The third engram is going to be at the Sword of the Edict, and it is the Sword of Edict's engram. Now this is found in the wilderness, it is just barely north of the wilderness lodestone, so just go ahead and run north into the wilderness volcano and you should be able to find this. Be aware, this is in the wilderness, so there is a chance of getting PK'd while doing this. So make sure you have a teleport out, I'm currently just using my max guild cape, uh, that's probably not the best teleport out, but it is in the wilderness, be aware you can die in the wilderness. The third engram is going to be a little bit south of Juna here for the Tears of Guthix. As you see, there's a little sparkle here. The fastest way of getting to the Tears of Guthix is to just use a games necklace. Uh, there is a teleport directly to the Tears of Guthix and collect this third engram, or fourth one really. The next engram is found by the World Gate here. It's in between the two rocks just north of it. You will collect the ward world gate engram here. Uh, fastest way to get here is the sixth age circuit teleport to the world gate. The next engram is going to be found on this prayer altar in Berthorpe. Uh, fastest way is probably going to be just teleporting to the lodestone and collecting it from there. You get the druid engram. The next engram is actually a little bit tricky. Uh, so we're going to be just east of the Falador Lodestone right here. Uh, and you want to come to this Gathering of Rocks. And you actually have to lower your camera angle down a little bit. And it's inside of one of these rocks. So they hit this one pretty well. So make sure you're gathering the balanced one as well. 
Next up is going to be in Fred the Farmer's house just north of Lumbridge. On his table here is the Sheep Engram. Next place we're going to be going is to Glarial's Tombstone. If you don't already know where that is, it is going to be northwest of Ardoin. And it's going to be just west here of the Fishing Guild, you can see in the top left corner. And it's pretty tricky one to spot. You're going to have to be looking down at the southwestern corner of the platform. And it's going to be right next to the tree here. So collect that one up. The next engram is going to be in Xanaris. And again, it's a pretty tricky one. Uh, you're going to be wanting to go by the sand pit. And there's going to be a mushroom right next to it. And if you have your camera facing north, you cannot see it at all. You actually have to spin your camera around and look underneath the mushroom to see the engram. It's a pretty hidden one, so make sure you're looking underneath the mushroom or just kind of scrolling around with your mouse a little bit to catch it. Second to last one is going to be the gnome engram. And it's going to be at a dead end in the middle of this maze here. You can see it right here. Uh, and honestly, it's kind of hard to get to that point. So what we're going to do is just run north of the Yaniel Lodestone and just get to the south end of this maze here and just click on the Nomangram and it will run you all around until you actually get to it. Uh, it does take a couple seconds to actually get to that, so I'm not going to waste your time and show you all of it, but that's where how they get the Nomangram the easiest way anyhow. The last engram we're going to collect is the Stone of Jazz engram. Now, this is going to be in the Fist of Guthix cave. Again, very convenient to have a game's necklace and just teleport to the gamer's grotto. And it's going to be the portal to the south in case you've never played this mini game. I know a majority of people probably haven't. Uh, and it's going to be on the top shelf of the rewards guy stand showing all the rewards off so just go ahead and click on that and collect the last engram i'm going to hop on over to the main game really quick the main location and charge up all these engrams okay so i just offered the majority of them but i have one left here and i want to show you the process of doing that all you do is left click on it and then you will charge the engram. It will use some of your memory strands as well as whatever energy it says it needs. And then you just use it on the fountain of energy. And there we go. That will complete my first prestige. Next thing you're going to want to do is actually to prestige if you're going for additional tiers of this. If you're not going for the additional tiers, you can just direct the Fountain of Energy and get whatever bonus you actually want. But what I'm going to be doing is prestiging, and then I will be able to get additional divination experience from all of these memory strands here. And I will be able to unlock an additional Echo Plink, basically. So that means that I can actually direct it and have multiple different perks available at the end of this. Uh, there is one engram that I did not show you, obviously, because I just got it for free the first time. And I will show you that. And then the rest of them are all going to be the same. Starting with your second prestige, you are going to have to be gathering this engram as well. And you are going to be going to... Naragun. Uh, basically the only way of actually getting here that I know of is with the fairy ring. All you do is go to fairy ring AIS. I'll go be sending you right here. You run north a little bit and then you are going to want to run west. Now this does require at least partial completion of the world's wake the world wakes quest. So keep that in mind. You do not want to prestige unless you actually have that available. And then all you do is collect the engram here. Okay, so coming in with the second prestige. One thing I do want to mention is I would recommend going for the Sword of Edict engram, the one that's in the wilderness first, because I got PK'd while going to that, which was really stupid. I wasn't risking anything. But somebody decided to kill me anyway, and I lost all my engram. So I had to go back and get all the engrams that I already gathered. Uh, I do want to show you that you do get a decent amount of divination experience from this. 206,000. Uh, I also want to mention if you direct it, you can uh, basically have a lot of extra perks. 
Uh, I will be going over all those perks in a different video, but for right now, we are going to be prestiging again and getting one last prestige before finishing up this video. Just finishing up the third and final time that I plan on getting these engrams. And let's go ahead and use them on the Fountain of Energy again and get another over 200,000 divination experience, so pretty nice. Uh, on top of that, I am planning on uh, getting my four passive effects. I believe I do have to prestige one last time to actually uh, be able to redirect it to four locations. There we go. I have finished up all three levels of prestige by doing that and then prestige the last time in order to make it so that I can have four passive effects. That means I am basically done with this mini game, so pretty nice. I uh, don't plan on coming back to this again. Uh, just plan on basically once you're finished up with it, you can turn these memory strands into Orla somehow. As far as what I was reading, uh, you can do that at any time past the first prestige. Uh, let's see if they have anything else for me. Not 100% sure how you can actually turn these in. Oh! Gain XP from butterflies. Whatever. Uh, apparently you can turn these in for a divination experience. We'll figure out how to do that later in the future. Hopefully you guys all enjoy and this helps somebody out to complete this event. If you guys do all enjoy, I'd love it if you leave a like down below, leave a comment, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see all of my future content. As always though, have a good one.